Yeah. All right, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's okay. We do record the show as we are doing this morning, and we will, um, the archive will be available later for you to watch at your convenience. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share uh, with your uh, friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. For those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, so so much your state library. So we provide services and training and consulting to all types of libraries in the state. Uh, so you'll find shows on um, Compass Live um, for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, anything and everything. Really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. Um, we sometimes have library commission staff do presentations and we sometimes bring in guest speakers. And we have kind of a mixture of that today. <laughs> um, it is the last Wednesday of the month, so that means it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day, which is the um, this when Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, um, usually comes on the show and does um, presentations for us on something techy. Um, so if you're into technology and things, this is definitely the time to um, sign up and watch our show the last Wednesday of the month. Um, and today she has a guest speaker with us, um, with her. Uh, this was something we had scheduled last month. But just due to, we had two different sessions, two different shows last month due to uh, uh, scheduling issues had to be changed and, and uh, rescheduled and that's okay. Um, so I'll just hand it over to you, Amanda, um, to tell us about what we're gonna be hearing about today. Well, so I am glad that I gave my show over to Brian today. <laughs> um, he is with the Evolve Project. So he has been changing the way the world sees libraries. I just read the tagline on his website, which I haven't seen in a while. And so I'm actually gonna put in the link to that website in the chat, just in case you wanna take a look at it. And you should see that in a second. And so Brian tracks tech trends. He does all that techie goodness. He helps libraries to figure out what kind of tech gadgets they wanna bring in, what could be useful for them. And basically, if it's techie, innovation, awesomeness, he's there. Is it any surprise that he wound up finding the technology innovation librarian? <laughs> so today he's gonna to talk about CES. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think that stands for Consumer Electronics Show. Yep, that's cool. correct. So Brian, if you want to talk about Evolve Project or just jump right into CES, I will leave that up to you. Yeah, I'll do a little bit about, about the Evolve Project. Uh, mm -hmm. So thanks for joining everyone today. Uh, as Amanda said, uh, today we're going to talk about the Consumer Electronics Show. Um, the cool thing about what I, what I get to do is I find startup companies and I ask them if they want to work with libraries. And so... I go to a variety of different conferences and events where there's usually not many librarians and I go to each booth and I ask, hey, have you considered marketing to libraries? And when I first started doing this, the vast majority of people were like, why? Like they just have books, we're not a, we're not a book vendor. And then that's when I explained that libraries like to use STEM tech or educational technology uh, to teach people things, teach people skills. and uh, through these conversations, I built up this massive partnership of a variety of different companies, uh, ranging from Little Bits, Firo, all the way to companies that are in other countries like Luca and Tony's, um, and helping them get situated in the United States by doing pilot programs with libraries. So I do a lot of really fun partnerships with different groups of people uh, and different different events to get people hands-on experience with, with stuff that they may not ordinarily see. Um, and the way I find these things, again, is I go to different conferences and venues. And so one such venue is this CES conference. 
with my slides forward. There we go. Um, so what is CES? As, as Amanda said, it's the Consumer Electronics Show. Uh, and in this in this like three day event, uh, there's lots of previews of brand new products, um, new product announcements. Um, a lot of companies show off all of their tech. So Samsung, LG, HP, Dell, those companies are even there. Uh, showing off the latest and greatest TV or, or computer or tablet, whatever it may be. But the cool secret is that there is a, uh, a place called Eureka Park, it's a section of CES that has a lot of startup companies. And so that's usually where I hang out. And it runs the first full week of January. Um, and it's, it's one of the largest events of its kind. Um, by extension in 2020, so before the pandemic shut down the world, uh, there was 170,000 people crammed into Las Vegas um, in a 2.9 million square feet arena, uh, multiple buildings, uh, multiple exhibits of different sizes. And I'll show you some pictures of that. Um, with over what, four it always, it's always in Vegas. It doesn't move around the country. Correct. Yeah, it is in Vegas every year. Um, so it's a good excuse to go out, I guess. Uh, oops. And then in 2021, they switched to virtual. Um, they had about 2,000 exhibitors, 80,000 people uh, attended, and 47 hours of like recorded content, which was really cool. And I'll share a link at the end so you can watch some of these recorded pieces. Oh, nice. <clears throat> so this was the coverage report for 2021. Um, and as you can see, tons of info, tons of data, uh, tons of different folks going, going, this was the virtual version. So giving an opportunity to meet a lot of new people. Uh, and then this was the, a session that came just pat, this past January. Uh, so I had 44,000 people attend uh, and then 40,000 people that were online. So about 80,000 people joined. Um, when we look at uh, the reason why this kind of is really neat and impressive is just by the sheer size of it. So while you go to these events, there's lots of networking opportunities. And so as a librarian or, or working for a library, uh, you can really network out and meet some really cool, fascinating people uh, and ask for their advice or opinions on, hey, what can we do to make our library better? Because again, the sheer size of this event takes up roughly 50 football fields. Um, so imagine going up and down 50 football fields uh, for a, over the course of a few days, your legs get pretty tired. Um, but there's so many things to see and experiment with and do and talk to. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool event. Uh, and I me, I somehow the hybrid what? version of it for this year still. Um, that so yep. many, it increases the accessibility of so many more people that, that who can attend online who could not possibly ever be able to do it in person. Yeah, exactly. And so it. There's really no no excuse not to try to attend in some fashion or another. Uh, you can attend in your PJs. <laughs> awesome. And so this is CES. So when you walk in, you get greeted with a bunch of lights, banners, tons of people. Um, and some people go all out in their booths. So this was a car company uh, and that was their booth. Lots of lights flashy things uh, because they want to draw you in and want you to like experiment, play and things of that nature. Shiny. <laughs> Very shiny, yeah. Come on slides, there we go. Uh, and then other companies like Samsung, uh, they took a clever route uh, this year in person where they had QR codes everywhere on um, just like wooden cubes. Uh, so to see the product, they didn't bring any physical product. It was all uh, scan to find and learn more. So I thought it was kind of clever and cute. Um, mm -hmm. And yet people sitting down, scanning things and, and watching like virtual AR style uh, product displays. And then you have stuff like this, uh, a TV company, a TV manufacturer. Uh, so again, everything's very flashy and showy from the big name brands. Uh, when you get to the startup area, it's, it's uh, more like tablecloth in a, in a, in a small little booth. Um, but it, it's cool, a lot, of, a lot of really neat things, including 
uh, cars that can change color from the outside. So BMW is there showcasing their color changing car with their special like paint uh, and the paint and, you, and it'll it'll change color to whatever you want. Does it go like red for road rage, like a mood car? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Yes. Or like you're being chased by the police, push a button. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if it's like one of those, if it'll be street legal. Um, <laughs> but it was a pretty cool concept. So what does it cost? Because, uh, you know, we don't have money trees just yet. Uh, so if you go in person uh, and you book early enough, you might you should be able to find a hotel for like anywhere from 150 to 250 dollars. Um, flight depending on where you're coming from, 200 to 400. Uh, and I ran that number earlier this year. I probably should have updated it. I'm sure the flight cost has changed because of the, the gas prices, but it's, it'll, it'll hopefully be around there still. Uh, and then food, I budgeted like $100 a day for food because if you're thrifty like me, you, you take advantage of any of the free meals that might be going around. Um, and so that's how I roll. Uh, I stuff my pockets with muffins from the continental breakfast and that's what I eat. Um, nice. as, as one of my friends say, it's balling on a budget. Um, so it's a good time. Uh, in transportation, uh, like to and from the airport, like it's 14 bucks. Uh, and then to get into the venue, uh, it's free if you register early, um, but you have to be like part of media or a uh, be involved in technologies in some, in some fashion. Uh, and so what I've done is I just share like my blogs that I have. Uh, so most libraries have blogs. And you can say, hey, I'm going to this conference. I want to blog about what I find. Uh, and they're like, okay, you're media. Or if you go, hey, we're a library and we we showcase a lot of cool tech, they'll be like, okay, you're you're in the you're in the technology industry. Um, so things to bring. I always tell people to bring a decent camera. Um, cell phone pictures aren't always the best if you want to capture some really cool things. So it's it's some areas are kind of dark. Um, and then a power brick for your cell phone is definitely needed, uh, especially if you're using your phone to take pictures. Uh, the reception in the buildings are, are rough because there's, you know, a whole bunch of folks crammed in there. Uh, and so your phone will drain pretty fast. Um, in terms of, of attire, uh, I always tell people to bring really, really good shoes because you'll wear them down. Because, again, you're walking through 50 football fields. Mm -hmm. uh, while there, people will ask, them, like, hey, what do I need to wear? Um, I see people wearing jeans and, like, a T-shirt all the way to full suits. Uh, so for me, I opted to wear like business casuals with jeans and a college shirt um, because my goal was to find people to work with, to bring them into library spaces. Mm -hmm. Sounds very similar to a library conference, like an ALA or a PLA actually. Yeah, yeah, same same attire. You'll have people all, all, all dressed up and some folks that are dressed down. So no one seemed to judge, which was nice. Uh, so again, to attend virtually, it's the same cost to attend. It's free for, as long as you register early uh, and you have to be either in media or members of the Consumer Technology Association. Uh, otherwise, it's only 150 bucks, which isn't horrible for a conference. For how many days is it? Three days-ish. Wow. Yeah, that's January 5th to the 8th in 2023. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I have my uh, finger hovering over the register button. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah, register now while you still can. Uh, when you attend virtually, you'll want like to be in obviously like a quiet space, bring pen and paper, because when you go to the exhibitors, I don't like their exhibitor space, and I'll show you what it looks like in a little bit um, on the virtual side, because it's very confusing. Um, but you'll want, you'll want some quiet time. Uh, and you make appointments essentially with all these virtual exhibitors if you want to chat with them one on one. Um, so why why do you even care? Like why are you all here? I highly doubt it's to see me. It's probably to see Amanda. And then you're like, dang it, Amanda's not talking. What's this guy have to offer? Uh, and so what? Why attend? Uh, it's a chance to see an experiment with technology that most folks won't be able to know about. Um, because it's not yet public knowledge. A lot of companies will do, if you notice, a lot of new tech gets announced in January and February, and they do the pre-announcements, 
at CES. Uh, so all those media folks will get a hold of, oh, cool, Some, so-and-so is coming out with a brand new TV that you can fold. I'm going to write my article and it'll, it'll announce it. But you'll be able to know well in advance. Uh, and the thing that I enjoy, because for what I try to do is, again, making startups meet libraries, uh, is you're going to see a lot of founders or creators or heads of marketing at this event. And that's when you can ask them, hey, would I be able to pilot test or beta test your product in my library space? Can I use your product for free? Um, and in exchange, my library will build programs and workshops around it. So you have an opportunity to explore what that would look like in our, in our ecosystem. So here's a couple of the links. Uh, so if you want to see presentations that were given at CES on the excuse me, virtual side, if you go to cesbroll.com, uh, that will get, show you a whole bunch of videos and, and like press related information um, of what happened at CES. Uh, and then the website, which has already been posted in the chat for CES is ces.tech. So here's the, the virtual experience. And this is why it was confusing for me. Uh, you see a list of logos and their name. It doesn't really tell you what they do or what, what um, niche market they're in or what they're trying to sell. You just see a logo. So for me, clicking through 4,000 logos was a painstaking task because that's how I found out what companies did what. Um, and so then I ended up having to go through each one, favoriting the ones that I liked to build my list. And then I had to go back through that list to then like schedule appointments. Mm. Um, and so the way I picked the, the companies too, is I like, oh, that logo looks like it's a playful educational type company. Um, and I guess pretty well, I think. Well, um, they don't have a search feature like where you can search by like topic or. They did, but everyone, there's a lot of companies, especially in like the European market that would just check everything. So you would check like, oh, they had a category for educational tech, but yeah. you'll have, okay. you'll see HP and Dell in there as well. And you're like, well, that's not really so what I want. If you squint one eye, kind of. So it was a little frustrating. So I just went by hand and scrolled away. Oh, PyTop. Yeah, yeah, they were there. Uh, so attending sessions was really simple. They had it all built into the web browser. Um, in 2021, uh, they had Billie Eilish uh, singing and then talking and some other famous singer uh, and then Ryan Seacrest. So they always try to bring in like famous people to help kick off the event, which was pretty cool. I feel like I should know who that girl is, but I just can't remember her name. Yeah, I can't remember her name either, but she's a famous singer, TikTok famous. Yeah. Mm. If anybody knows, let us know. Type in the question. <laughs> uh, so what were some of the top trends from CES? Uh, I put down, or from what my experience was, there was a lot of artificial intelligence being used in ways other than just answering and receiving questions. Um, there's also a bunch of robotics and automations to quote unquote, make your life better. Uh, and there was a lot of things showing how AI and robots could do health tracking, contact tracing because of the whole COVID thing, uh, temperature scanning and things of that nature. So in terms of tech trends, um, the goal it seemed like of AI, at least the way CES presented it or the attendees at CES was how can we replace basic interactions to make things more effective and efficient? So one co such company had a uh, product that could not only box products together, but also unbox for display cases. Uh, so you have your little AI robot, it knows how to pack something and it also knows how to properly display. Uh, and so then their demo was just a bunch of boxes as the robot arm would pick up apples and redistribute. Sweet. Um, Another company was showcasing how they use LiDAR uh, sensors to give robots the ability to see. Um, and so in this example, that was showing how the robot was able to use LiDAR to detect people uh, and objects. Um, they were also, a lot of companies were also talking about how they use AI or computer vision for smart infrastructure. So detecting when there's traffic or when there's an accident or an emergency. 
um, industrial machines like we saw with the unpacking robot, uh, how, how smart cars and vehicles drive and so forth. Uh, Hiru uh, was an artificial intelligence company that wanted to make like these wearables to um, like by, by using geolocation to help solve problems. Um, and their problem they were trying to solve is uh, eye health and vision disorders. So as you were traveling, Hiru should be able to detect things for you, almost like a seeing eye dog. Um, and then also not only be able to help you on that side, but also diagnose and treat visual uh, issues like field loss, double vision, and other type of vision problems. That is really cool. Yeah. Uh, and then other people were, uh, there was a lot of kiosk driven uh, AI companies. So a little like kiosk you walk up to and there's an AI there that chats with you um, and giving this contact free experience. Uh, and so this one was real people, I believe, uh, called Roboris. Uh, so you would have like a, almost like a Skype call, um, but it's all built into the app. Or the AI flavor, uh, where you have your uh, artificial intelligent individual um, from a company called DeepBrain uh, talking to you uh, and having conversations. Mm, they need an AI librarian added to that list. <laughs> they do. You know, well, they have uh, influencer. Librarians can be influencers. Or information clerk. It's like all of them. Information I, clerk. Maybe. There we go. That, yeah, sure. That I don't know. Be. Just mm. guessing. <laughs> it's both intriguing and terrifying. Yes. <laughs> and then if you wanted one for your dog as well or your cat, there was a, a, a veterinarian company called Kist. Uh, and like it would be able to identify your dog's face and pull up like the patient information. So, what, something for everyone. I saw there was on that first screen, there's something called Pet Cube that uh, was one of the places too. Yep, uh, that was a, um, like a thing where you can talk to your dog and then shoot a um, pet treat at it. Oh, yes, I've seen oh, yeah. that. Yeah, so like when you're at work and your dog, yes, okay. Well, I've tried that with my pets before. My cat will like look longingly at the camera and then like be like, nah, I don't even like you and then walk away. Yeah. Uh, my dog gets upset because then she's running around trying to figure out where I'm at. And then she runs back to the camera like very confused. Oh, yeah. No, I don't do it no more. It breaks her heart. <laughs> what is this sorcery? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so other cool tech trends that were discussed was VR and AR. Um, there was a ton of VR based companies, um, some for like doing your exhibit exhibits. Like if you had an art gallery or something like that, there was a company called Virtual Italy and you can actually use their product to tour um, famous Italian art. Um, and even there was another company called Rendever uh, that made a VR company for senior care. Uh, and the goal was that seniors, especially during the pandemic, were isolated. And so this gives them the opportunity to like go on a VR field trip with their family members or, or other people in their nursing home uh, and travel together virtually, of course, which I thought was pretty neat. That's cool. Yeah. I see a lot of libraries doing that too. Yeah, I was like, wow, libraries should be stepping up to end that. They don't need a company to do that. They can just do it with their own stuff they have. Yeah, I've seen libraries do like those um, using Google Maps to do like book tour, book walks of of like the like uh, a book and where it actually took place, and then they you can use that oh, to like, go to the different locations that were mentioned in the book. So as you're reading it, you can kind of go and see you know like it was a book about Paris, and here's a thing that goes to the Eiffel Tower, and yeah. Oh wow, that's fun. That's what they call the lit trips, like literature trips. Oh, that's cool. I like the name. Uh, so if you're playing a VR game, this is called Tax Suit, and it'll ha it has vibration pads all over the place. So if you were to get shot or stabbed in your VR world, you feel like this vibration wherever you got hit. Kind of fun. Mm -hmm. so my computer, uh, for my, my consoles does that. I don't know if I want my whole body to feel. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, there's a company called OrCam, and their first product they ever made was the OrCam Read. It was a handheld stick that you can scan over words and it would read to you. They took that a step farther and they made glasses. So people that are blind or visually impaired can hear um, voice communication. So if it was to read text, recognize faces, identify products, things of that nature, it would help. It has a little AI component in there um, to be able to detect objects. That is awesome. So how, how do you get to test these things? Yeah, like a lot of, almost all the products at CES you can play with and test. How accurate is this? Did you try uh, <laughs> They were just showing the, um, like reading a magazine. And it would just read to you as you looked at it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, someone does have a question that is actually, while we're looking at this one, it kind of um, is appropriate time to maybe ask about this. Did, um, did the vendors share the costs of all of these new products? They, they have. Do. Give any sense yeah, of what it was do. cost. So they, so you do have, they have the prices there. Yeah. Correct. Oh, it's the, the vast majority. Um, like this company, Mojo Lens, I don't think they shared what the cost was because I would assume it's astronomical. Um, <laughs> and there's probably enough, not enough board space to write the cost, but they're making a contact lens that has an AR component. So you can have like a heads up display like you see in futuristic movies. Um, uh, and this is some future tech crazy, wow, okay. <laughs> So if you're like going on a bike ride, you can have it set to like monitor your heart rate, the elevation, how fast you're going, how fast your friend's going, and the distance you you are from your destination. Like the next step from Google Glass. Yeah, just pop it in your eyeball. But see, I have this weird aversion for eye touching, so like I don't like it. Yeah, so many people don't do. Yeah, can't do it at all. <laughs> I can't even do eye drops. Mm -mm. Um. And there was a, another company that was announcing low cost uh, headsets for VR and AR as like VR glasses or AR glasses um, that can connect to your computer. So it's one of the newer companies I haven't heard of before. So I was like, all right, sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Changing gears, I'm gonna speed up a little bit so we can go through some cool library specific tech. Um, another big trend, obviously, was health because everyone was interested in contact care tracing, senior care. Uh, so they had masks that you can change the color of, and it'll also change color based on the air quality you're breathing, um, and it can detect like uh, the the quality of the air, and even tells you when to change your um, what's that called filter. Mm -hmm. Next one, uh, the bio button was this idea from a company called BioIntelliSense, and it says that monitoring COVID was as easy as using a sticker. Um, so you basically slap this on you and it'll monitor your heart rate, temperature, and respiratory rate, uh, and then make like notifications for you if it sees any deviations, like, hey, you may be sick. Hmm. Um, then there's a whole bunch of companies that were showcasing their version of a uh, COVID passport uh, to help save your, your COVID information. Mm -hmm. uh, this was kind of neat. This was a digital biosensor strip um, to test for COVID-19. Uh, and then it put it on an encrypted RFID tag and made that your health pass. So it would say, hey, you have the um, antigens and you can use it to scan for like in replacement of a COVID vaccination, you can say I have my antibodies and or whatnot. And here I can test right now. Hmm. And this company was called uh, Graf Grafiel. So you can show people like live, like like if they're concerned, you can say, hey, look here, let me show yeah. you this right now. I can tell you, show you exactly what my situation is. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> I always say allegedly because I'm always skeptical sometimes of some of the new stuff. Yeah. Uh, until I've played with it and I can validate. But uh, this was kind of neat. This is called a motion pillow. Uh, and it's, it's just for your significant other, others that snore. Uh, and so when it detects snoring and it senses how the user's head is, it has like airbags in the uh, pillow that will inflate or make them move 
uh, mm -hmm. without disturbing their sleep, thus reducing snoring or stopping it altogether. Um, so basically it's a, a pillow with like this box that can pump air into it and, and a sensor. Um, I snore apparently is what I'm told. Uh, so I haven't tested it yet. So I might I, do less. I was gonna say, my, my husband would like that because yes, I, I, I do snore and I, there, are, there, you go. there are issues. <laughs> Well, now you can bring something home that you learned at work. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so this one actually won an award for best of innovation. Uh, and it's Abbott's, the company Abbott, they're, they're fairly well known, but not broadcast. Like a lot of the products that you have in your house are probably built by Abbott. Uh, and this was called Abbott's Freestyle Libre. Uh, and it's a glucose monitoring system. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's Freestyle Libre provides glucose readings every minute uh, and trends with a small sensor worn on the back of your arm. So that little circle thing goes on your arm and it reads your um, glucose throughout the day. For those that have hearing aids, uh, this is a device that can remove moisture from your hearing aid. So small, useful. I'm surprised you don't have something like this that seemed like a, a needed type of product. Uh, that was called Redux. This is AlgoCare. Uh, and this is a nutrition as a service. So it won awards in 2021 and 2022. Uh, so the nutrition as a service model basically uses your like bio biology to determine what vitamins and minerals you need. Um, so it analyzes your health using AI uh, and then it makes a precise dose of what vitamins you need for that day. Uh, and then your history is recorded and learned. And as you get healthier, it, it tweaks those, those settings. So you know the exact supplements that you need. Nice. Hmm. Rather than I randomly think, just taking vitamins and hoping you're doing it the right way. <laughs> I've been doing the multivitamin thing for years, but apparently that's not what you want to do. Like, <laughs> but they taste good. So I'm confused. I'll take it though. Uh, this is a bath mat. Uh, so when you stand on it, it takes your weight, your balance, your posture, uh, and a bunch of other readings that it can pull just from the from your feet. What if I just don't want to know? And you don't I look don't at it. Much. You step over it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's a lot of yelling at me first thing in the morning. I don't know. <laughs> uh, this is really cool. Uh, this is called Vico's at home urine test strip. And it's for like a personalized nutrition lifestyle advice. Um, so, you know, you can use that with the nutrition thing and sync them together. I wanted to check this out, I, to be honest. I thought it was kind of neat. Um, so it's called VO or VVO. Uh, this is called Nylon Med. And this is a toothbrush that lets you brush your teeth in like less than like a couple minutes. You basically put the whole thing in your mouth and it brushes your, your tops and bottoms of your teeth called the Y brush. It goes vibrating in your mouth? I guess so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's designed for people that are always on the go. And I was like, I like that. I hate brushing my teeth. This, make, this makes it easier for me, done. <laughs> uh, there's a company called Lofty uh, and they make a bunch of different uh, clocks and lights with the goal of, they say that your circadian rhythm is in fact is impacted by lights. And so when you go to sleep, you need a specific kind of light and to wake up better and healthier, you need a specific kind of light. Um, and so I thought it was kind of neat and, and cool. So you can do stuff like that in your library and change because they, they've, they've, they said for years that having specific lights can change moods. So mm -hmm. if you know, you want a nice calming meditation space in your library, I think the color is blue. Uh, if you want like a fight club in, in your library, the color is red. <laughs> All right, switching gears. So uh, a couple tech overall tech trends, distant learning and better communications. Uh, and like webcams was another huge, like lots of new webcam companies. Um, or here, like so this one was called uh, Linklet. And the goal of it was to make your um, Zoom meeting a little bit more interactive uh, and give you like, give people like this first person point of view if you're showing something. So that's a linklet. Mm -hmm. 
This is the Air Selfie. And if you were to Google Air Selfie right now, uh, they're getting a lot of flack because I because it sounds like they also had a Kickstarter where they never made anything. So now I'm like hesitant to share it. But the idea, so the cool thing about CES too is while the product might not be ready, the concept is. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of other new drone companies. Now after the Air Selfie showed theirs, where you throw a drone in the air, it detects your face, takes a picture and comes back to your hand. Um, and that's the goal of the Air Selfie. But now you're going to start seeing more and more of those. Uh, this one's really cool. Uh, this one ha is called the Anchor Work B600. It's a webcam that also has a built-in light. Um, so you can have better video uh, when you're doing a, a video call. So rather than having that whole separate ring light or something else, it's just one yeah. piece. All built in, yeah. Nice. Um, they even had smart mirrors. So this is Barracuda's uh, uh, product. Uh, that shows a mirror that can give you personal health data, uh, helps you do your makeup if you wore makeup. Uh, so I thought it was, that was pretty neat. And it's, it's built in with Alexa, which will be fun. So you can, you know, play music. Um, so yeah, that's that one. Fine. I don't know if I want my mirror to talk to me either. Mirror, Maybe. mirror on the wall. <laughs> Who's the first one of all? You are, yes. You know, it's like better. It's like even better than the daily affirmation. Okay. Unless they program the mirror to be like a mean girl, and it just says like, "Ew, are you wearing that?" <laughs> yeah. I already say that to myself, so that's all good. Yeah. I don't need a mirror to do that too. Um, and then what was surprising at CES was there was a group of folks that were talking about sustainability. Uh, and their products were to help with sustainability. Um, so there was a climate summit a little before CES this year, uh, and it had brands like GM and Samsung talking about how they're trying to be more sustainable, how they're looking at building products that focus on green technology. Um, and the CEO or the like the organizer of CES um, challenged everyone by saying, how can we create more sustainable practices to reduce our environmental footprint? Uh, and so here's the companies that did that. This is called uh, Sufura, Sufura, I'm probably saying it wrong, S-E-P-U-R-A home. And it basically is a new and improved garbage disposal. Um, so unlike a normal garbage disposal, when you throw your food in, it sucks it out and then it goes to your sewage system. Uh, what this does is it takes the food waste into a collection bin, and then you can use that collection bin for your compost. Oh, hmm. nice. That could be kind of handy. Wow. Well, uh, this is the Wiz Gambit. It's a uh, AI robot that cleans and disinfects, um, and obviously to help reduce health risk and sharing cold viruses and flus and other things. Um, and it's being used in hospitals and shopping malls and schools. Sounds like the kind of thing that would be good for a library because those are the similar type of locations where lots of people are coming and going. Yep. Yeah. Well, new, new, new people. Very expensive yeah. Yeah. So you might be able to hire an army of people for the same price. Uh, <laughs> but either way, uh, tech trends and robots. So lots of cool robots were just were, were discussed. Samsung always seems to come out with like new goofy robots, which are the ones on the left, uh, and Misty Robotics, which recently got bought, is on the right. So one company was called Roybee. Uh, it's a child's toy that learns with your child as they get better and better at like doing math puzzles and things of that nature. It makes the challenges even harder. And there's over 500 different activities you can do. Hmm. For those that want a pet and rather have nightmares, this <laughs> is the first AI dog. So Coda was running around and scaring the crap out of people. Um, I would not want a dog like this because it's, it's haunting. Like, these are the yeah. things in the horror movies. Videos of these there, but <laughs> way too like. If you really wanted a dog and had allergies. There's your solution, I suppose. I guess. Come on. My the PowerPoint new, slide does not want to. Less robotic, robotic looking. That's the thing that makes me go. That's too scary. No, 
This is yeah, the, you want you want to add some fur to it? I think that that'll make it even scarier. <laughs> or like spot where it has like the little yellow, or add some color to it, or something. Yeah. Death dog. Death dog. Uh, this is called Achilles, and it's a chairless type of passive. Uh, it's for an exoskeleton. Uh, so like biomechanics or bioengineering. Um, so you can have uh, be able to walk if you can't walk, or if you if you have a uh, if you have pain like throughout the day, uh, mm -hmm. this helps alleviate it. So there's a quite mm -hmm. a few companies showing exoskeletons like to make you stronger and lift lift heavy things. Um, neat. Here's your pet cube. Oh, okay. Uh, so there's a built-in laser and it shoots a treat into your at your dog. And there's a built-in vet chat. Oh. Your dog can talk to your vet. <laughs> I suppose so. Woof, woof. Or you um, can show your vet. This is what's wrong with him. <laughs> uh, and so this is a company called Autonomy, uh, and they are actually being used in Madison, Wisconsin. I saw one of these things in person before I was at CES, so I like knew I put it together right away. Um, this is like the AI version of Grubhub. It'll go pick up an order and bring it to whoever needs it. Um, and so the Madison, Wisconsin was doing it over by the college campus because everyone's pretty much located in the same area. Um, and I don't remember what, what companies partnered with it, um, but it would pick up from a couple of different uh, restaurants for food and it keeps it warm or cold depending on what was ordered uh, and delivered. I could see that like as a delivery system for libraries for like homebound patrons or yeah. just lazy people. I mean, I would like that. I'm, I'm, refrigeration. I identify as lazy. So like, I like it. <laughs> like, if it can like, just, I like, it knows how to open my like smart door and then drive inside and where I'm laying on the couch eating Cheetos, like even better. <laughs> Deposit the book into your cheesy hand. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because libraries I want that. Like, yeah. I thought they would. Books. <laughs> uh, all right. And here's another robot showing how it can do obstacle avoidance, deliver pizzas, take orders, and things of that nature. So you don't get there's the bored a... teenager anymore? <laughs> nope. Nope. You get a, a isolated robot with no emotion instead. So you don't have to tip them. No, that's the cool thing, I suppose. You save a buck or two. It's true. Uh, so here's a couple crazy pieces of tech. Uh, I'm going to go through these pretty fast. Uh, here's a flying hovercraft. Here's a uh, a lifelike human that, like, for, for, for practicing dentistry, and it'll move around, kick around, and everything else. Um, I don't want to <laughs> Digitalize. We'll move forward. Um, this was a health monitoring tool uh, that does it only by your camera. So somehow it's able to detect a bunch of things about you by looking at your face. It knows all. I suppose so. Um, this is the uh, like the smart, powerful AI hand that you can put on your if you. Uh, or missing ligaments or whatever it may be, you put this on and it's it's able to do sensory feedback, which is brand new uh, to those type of devices. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Care Clever. It's the world's first care at home robot for people that are you know isolated and it does virtual visits, it talks to people um, and it gives you that human interaction. Uh, mm -hmm. This camera I think was like 10 grand and it's a um, it's the dual fish eyed lens camera uh, to make basically like those VR experiences. And that's the lens, mind you, not the camera, the lens. Mm -hmm. so, you also got to buy the camera. Of course. I am taking donations if you want me to play with one. Uh, this is called the Scenic VR. Uh, it's the first solution to help avoid virtual reality sickness. This company originally made something for car, car motion sickness. So if you get sick while you're in the car, mm -hmm. and they figure out how to do it for the same for VR. Yeah, that is a big thing. Some people, it, VR is great, and then some people are just 
they lose they just can't do it and it's not so it's not for everyone yet um yeah yep. nice i wonder if that would work for people who are um motion sickness on boats too or in ships ah, mm -hmm. i don't know the signs mm -hmm. it's two very cool like dudes they look like lumberjacks <laughs> and um that's how i remember their faces uh and that's all they do they so yeah i can ask them i would assume it'd be different because it's a different movement versus a car or a vr but who knows you just adjust it for what a boat does yeah um, this is called the Wow Cube. It's a like almost like a Rubik's cube that you can twist and play with. You do it with different games. Mm. So that's to be a fun little product to have around in your library. Uh, Samsung does a thing called C Labs, and it's like a like their own version of Shark Tank. Okay. And so they come out with a bunch of new like products every year. Um, and so Zamstar is an electric style guitar that teaches you how to play guitar. Um, Peloto, I'm probably butchering the names. It's an AI solution that helps children develop smartphone usage habits. So how long should you be on your phone? You should have, you know, self-regulation skills is what it teaches. Adults need that too. <laughs> yeah, probably need the app. No more TikTok, Brian. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, Fluent Pet teaches your dog vocabulary. Uh, so you may have seen the videos where the dog can talk by pressing buttons. This is one such company. Um, this is the WAGS, the GPS tracker uh, that will also be less expensive than an invisible fence because it'll also, you can like geofence your area uh, and keep out zones so it will prevent your dog from going in areas they shouldn't. So you even have stuff for your babies. Um, the first one is the I baby smart and it was a AI powered baby monitor um, that can determine how your baby's sleeping, what their development is. Uh, it warns parents when babies are in potentially bad situations, somehow like they're about to put their finger in an outlet. I'm not positive, um, but it's supposed to be able to monitor your, your child and its growth. Uh, mm -hmm. Cradle-wise is a baby crib. It's a smart crib that when it detects your baby wake up, wakes up and you still want to sleep, it'll automatically like rock and get the baby to go back to sleep. Uh, and then track its sleep as well as white noise generator. My brother would have liked that, but his kids are too old for that now. I would like that. Right? Like, make me a bigger size, please. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about was RoboTry from the cool CES stuff. Uh, and then we'll talk about library specific technology for the last few minutes. Um, so RoboTry, basically what it is, is you build your own robot online, like they'll give you templates, uh, and then they'll ship you like a cutout cardboard version of it um, so you can build it and see your prototype. That is so cool. Amanda, we need that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now everyone hop on your cell phone, scan the QR code, and type in what technology are you most excited for? Oh, like we can do this right here on this? Yep, yep, and it should hopefully pop up. I will actually share the link to a piece of technology that I just saw. Okay, I did that with my phone, and now I have a... Oh, a... hold on, let me hit play. Oops, my bad. What should I... Yeah. There we go. What technology are you most excited for? It should be a, uh, a text box now. I see it. Yes, it just came up on my phone. So everybody, you've got your phones. Go ahead and take a picture of that cute. Well, put that QR code up on your camera, and it'll automatically give you the URL to jump to. Um, and then it should display. If we're lucky, maybe. There we go. Oh, you're not able to see it on the screen, are you? Nope. Oh, well, that's a bummer. Uh, so right now someone wrote AI and robots. Ah, here we go. Fluent pet. Can do it.
Someone write quick delivery robots. All right, now it's showing mm -hmm. up on your guys's. All right, you can feel free to add stuff to it. We'll continue on. So must have at home educational technology. Speed round. So we only got a few minutes left. Oh, it's this okay. We'll take we'll go as long as we need to, even though we officially go to. Uh, I'll mention that now. So we're talking about that. Um, we officially go to eleven, but um, we'll go as long as it takes for you to get through everything you want to show us. And if anybody has any questions about any of this or anything you were wondering about a technology that might be there, um, go ahead and type in the question section. We don't have to cut off right at eleven o'clock. We can go as long as people need to or want. Well, to. we'll we'll be here till uh, midnight. <laughs> Probably, possibly. <laughs> if I'm right gonna... along for if I'm going to have a hope or a prayer of getting to my meeting, I actually have to duck off. Okay. But That's fine. I'll see you around. All right. Thank uh, thanks you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. And also mentioned too, um, Brian, you um, were you are you willing to share your slides with people too, so yeah, they yeah. can refer back to? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So afterwards, we'll have the slides along with the um, archive too. Sweet. Um. So some must, home, must have at home educational technology or at library educational technology. This is Luca. Uh, it's a very popular in China. And Luca is a AI robot that can read uh, books. So you hold up the book, Luca identifies the book and reads it to you. So if you were to flip to a random page in the book, Luca would know what page you're at and start reading from that page. This is Tony Box. Uh, Tony's is a very popular company in Germany, uh, and they make what's called Tonys, uh, which are the little characters. And each little character you place on the smart speaker, and it will read a story based on that character. So if you had Pinocchio, it would read Pinocchio. If you had the uh, lion from the Lion King, it would talk about Lion King and play music. So that's hmm. Tonys. Very cute, very fun. Maybe story uh, this is Pie Top. It's a robotics kit. Um, with a little AI component. So you can build like these really cool AI robots that can like detect a ball, a specific colored ball and pick it up. Um, teach people how to, and it teach, teaches people how to code. Um, and you can do it in a coding environment built inside of Teams. So as a group of people, uh, you can code together. Uh, Finch 2.0 uh, is the new and improved Finch and it allows you to um, program via Bluetooth. There is a um, micro pixel as well, so you can draw art on your little LED pixel. Uh, mm -hmm. It even has the pen thing, so you can put your pen in through the, the top of the finch and draw shapes. This is the ClickBot, um, and it's a creative robot that teaches you about AI and robotics. Um, so again, using the cameras and sensors built in, um, you can learn how to program a robot. This is chess up. I thought this was really neat. Um, it's a connected chess board with a, a built in chess instructor. So the pieces light up uh, to show you all the different possible moves of a specific piece. Uh, and then you'd be able to play against the computer. You'll have to move their pieces, but um, chess. Interesting. Yeah, I, I like. I used to play chess all the time as a kid, so I was excited. I like. I don't have anyone to play now, and I was mm -hmm. like, "Well, that'd be fun to play again." Um, this is the temporary tattoo printer. Uh, basically, you roll the printer along your body, and you have an instant tattoo. Not for life, but you bring your instant tattoo to life. For those that want to create selfie videos, um, there's a variety of different companies out there now, but some of the coolest ones I saw at CES was from Belkin. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It's a magnet mount. And uh, Pivo, uh, you put your phone in there and then it'll detect your face and, and pivot and pan as you move. That's nice that it automatically follows you. Yep, it'll detect your face and, and follow you around. Uh, this is Pico. Uh, and so this is the idea of using this, like these, these wands, uh, and you play a variety of different games outside to get people to play. Um, so it'll be like, find the person with the green light and everyone runs around looking for that individual. 
Um, so you get that same experience of like gaming, but you're you're doing it outdoors and having fun. This is the Animal Island Learning Adventure. Uh, and it's like this built-in tablet. And the idea is you can learn through short learning sessions. Um, so there's a, a kid version of the app where you, where the kid will play the different activities. And then the adult side of the app is you select what learning outcomes you want them to have. Whether that's learning the ABCs, matching colors, drawing shapes, et cetera. Uh, this is really neat. This is uh, R the RT Max. Uh, and you can learn to code line by line uh, and then draw with it. And so you basically, like in my, what was that? In high school, we had to like draw Mickey Mouse by using equations. So similar idea, um, but in this, you can drag and drop code, drop, drag and drop commands like go left, go right, use this color, um, but you can also write it out in Python. So like typing out what it should do. All right, let me reload this. All right, so survey time. If you go back to the same website, so if you're already on your phone, just refresh the page. Um, and this should be, let me hit play. So now if you go back to the website, you may have to refresh the, the page you're on. Choose which library focused tech gadget are you most excited for? We have someone vote for the Finch. Oh, and I can see them. And now on this one, I can see what people, I guess other people okay. have done. We have 67 vote percent of the votes for the Finch, 33 for Tony's. Hmm. And uh, so yeah, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you learned some new things or got to experience some new things. If you're watching the recording, I always tell people, you're more than welcome to email me if you want more information about a specific product or you need an introduction. I introduce people to all these different companies all the time. Mm -hmm. um, is sort of what I do and what I like to do. So if you're like, man, I want to do a pilot with one of these companies, Brian, and I really like this company, I'll, I'll set up the intro and we'll, we, we see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, actually, well, the first comment we did get at the beginning of the show early on um, was, um, how do I get a job like Brian's? <laughs> that's funny. Uh, <laughs> like playing like if you like to play with stuff, you can just do it is what I always like I did this while I worked at the library still. Um, yeah. and I always encourage people just to, hey, if you have a, something cool you want to try and it doesn't cost money, like, then why are you not trying it? Yeah, sure, it might take a little bit more time, but um, if you're passionate about stuff, I always try to make room for it. Yeah, and, and getting these, just doing these pilot projects, that's the thing, too. There are so many... Um, there's grants out there that you can apply for from us, the Library Commission or all sorts of other places um, to do these pilot projects to try things out. It's something that um, IMLS, the Institute of Museum and Library Services, they're always looking for. All, their focus is always, can some other library replicate this? Or can you, you know, you, you, you will give you money to test out your concept, your idea, your, your library thing you want to do um, so that you can see if it, you know, um, in practice can be, you know, something viable and if it works great then you share that information and other libraries can follow and do it themselves if it doesn't failure is a learning experience too mm -hmm. it didn't work out so um there's lots of places yeah because that's one of the questions too is the cost of these is are i know you mentioned some of these things like ten thousand dollars are ridiculous of course um but are there things that would be um yeah. affordable the, for libraries yeah. the the library focus tech that i shared are like really affordable like the tony's box you can buy a tony's kit for like 100 bucks the finch is 150 mm -hmm. um luca i think is 150 as well um but yeah they're all in that like typical stem education cost which is around 150 dollars yeah 
Yeah, that's something they could do. Libraries could do that themselves, or like I said, apply for a grant to get a few of them. Um, we here at the Library Commission and Amanda, she had to you know, leave as she said earlier, she does our tech kits that we check out to libraries so that you can test out things. And um, she's always coming up with new, bringing in new ones and setting up new kits for us. So uh, she may get some of these for you all to test out as well. Um, she gets her ideas from all, you know, always, always updating new, new, new robots, new, new coding things that uh, come up. So uh, if you are a Nebraska library, I'll just show you that here. Actually, let me go back to PhD. I think if I do, Tech kits through the mail, yeah. Um, so if you're a Nebraska library, this is a thing we offer for the from the Nebraska Library Commission to libraries in Nebraska. Um, you can get a set of these and you get, as you can see, multiple copies of them. She doesn't just send you one. So you can have a program with a bunch of kids that come in and use one of the, you know, uh, the SNAP or whatever she's got here. So you'll get multiple ones. That's that you can. awesome. Yeah. So she may come up with some new ones after uh, seeing this presentation of Brian's. It's <laughs> cool. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So does anybody have any other last minute desperate questions you want to ask of Brian right now? You can type into the question section. Um, I already grabbed all the ones that people were asking throughout about price and library things and whatnot. Um, but of course, he gave his email address there. And we do have, so this is the session page for today's show where I do have a link to um, Brian's Evolve project website and the CS uh, site. So um, you can always reach out to Brian through there. Um, and then here's the main page for CS. And I will add the link that you gave us to Brian through the um, recordings, the archives for, from this um, CS. And now are these just from the most recent one or is that what's um, on? I think they have the archives too, to be honest. Oh, okay. um yeah they'll, they have the dates on them so okay yeah so you can you can find some things that might have been from previous yep. shows. cool oh yeah there's a video archive up here that's my year hey yep. there you go there you yep so i will add that to the session page um for the recording thanks for having me yeah, awesome. Yeah, it doesn't look like anybody has any other questions right now. That's fine. Um, I'll um, wrap things up for everyone then. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here with us this morning for our um, pretty sweet tech CES 2022 show. Uh, lots of good resources here. The recording um, will be available, should be done by the end of the day tomorrow, depending on how as long as uh, GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. <laughs> um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's available. Um, and we will also push out to our various social media. We do have there we go, a Facebook page for Encompass Live. If you like to use Facebook, follow us there. We have reminders. Here's your reminder to log in today's show, intro to our speakers. Um, here's when we let... Um, there we go, when the recording's available. So you can follow us there or on Twitter and Instagram, I think we use the hashtag EncompLive, little abbreviation. So look for that anywhere. Um, our recordings go to our, this is our main Encompass Live page and you can just use your search engine of choice and this is the only thing that will come up. Nothing else is called Encompass Live yet. Nobody else is allowed to use that name. <laughs> but right underneath our upcoming shows is our archives. So the most recent one will be at the top here. It will, so today's show will be there for you to watch. And as I said, we'll have a link, I'll, I'll add the links to, or we have the links to the Evolve Project, CES, and I'm gonna add the B, CES B-roll. Um, and then also to Brian's slides that he'll send me eventually. <laughs> um, while we're here, I will show you there is, this is a, there's a search feature on our show archives. If you want to, you can search our show, full archives to see if there's been a show on a topic you may be interested in. You can also just do the most recent 12 months. You can limit it to just the most recent, the last 12 months if you want to. Um, and that is because, and I'm not gonna scroll all the way down because this is a long, long list. This is our show archives going back to when Encompass Live premiered, which was January, 2009. So uh, we've got, 10, 12, however many years worth of uh, shows here. Um, 
So just pay attention when you are watching a show to the original broadcast date. Everything has a date on it. Uh, some shows will be good to watch, no problem. Stand the test of time, still have good resources and information. But some shows may become old and outdated. Um, information may have changed drastically since then. Um, services or resources may no longer exist or be totally different. Links may be broken uh, because things have moved or changed. Um, but we are a library, you know, like libraries. We keep things for archival purposes, and this is one place as long we have somewhere to host all of our recordings which right now we've got them on our youtube channel we'll always have them out there available to you um, but just pay attention to that original broadcast date if you do watch anything in our archives all right so that's for today's show um next week um well, uh, so as i mentioned amanda does pre-sweet tech the last wednesday of every month so the next pre sweet tech will be August 31st. And as you can see here, we don't, I'm not sure what her topic is going to be. I usually get to ask her that before she leaves, but um, we'll get that up here for you soon when she decides what she's going to do for next month. Um, but she's scheduled every, every month, the last Wednesday of the month. And next week's show, though, will be about building a reading community through podcasting. Um, We've got a whole group of people staff, and you can see all the names here from our Omaha Public Library, who have a podcast called The Book Drop, and they want um, want to come on the show and talk about um, what they've been doing, how doing podcasting and reading. So definitely sign up for that. Any of our other upcoming shows, you see, I've gotten started scheduling things into September. I've got some August dates to fill in here, so keep an eye on our schedule um, for what our upcoming shows are. So thank you again, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Brian. Good to see you again. Good to see you as well. Take care. Yeah, and I hope we will have you again uh, uh, soon. I know you were here a few months ago for a show, too. Um, he's been on the show before, Brian has. And maybe after next year's CES, we'll see what uh, comes up what from that stuff we have. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. All right. So thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.